other than in the Bible, I don't think I've, in, in, in terms of the Bible, other than that, I don't think I've ever had a conversation with someone where we use the word expiation or propitiation. I don't know, maybe, have any of you ever, used, do you use those in your classes, like expiation, propitiation? Okay, so let me ask you, what is expiation? What is it to expiate? Expiation is to make atonement. So this may be a little bit more common than expiation, atonement. And uh, there was the day of atonement where they would take blood and they would sprinkle it. Okay, so that was uh, the expiation. At atonement, one time a brother shared, atonement, think of it as at one mint. At one mint. So this expiation or atonement is to make two parties one. How about propitiation? Maybe someone can give us a definition of propitiation. We sang about it tonight. That was a really good hymn, right? Really enjoyable. Propitiation made by the blood. What is propitiation? Well, propitiation is appeasement. So, um, it's, it's a very, um, it's a judicial matter. It's a legal matter. So you have party A and you have party B. And party A has done something to, to offend party B. And so party C comes in to take care of the problem, to reconcile party A and party B. And what party C does, that's called propitiation. What party C does appeases the situation between A and B. It takes care of what A owes to B, whatever that is, so these two can become one again. It's kind of like this. You know, I'm a freshman at UT, and, um, you know, I just, I'm always late to class. So I'm just running, running, you know, I'm, I'm in my car, I live just right off campus. I decided not to live in the dorm, save a little bit of money, so I'm always driving, driving, looking for parking, you know, just an impossible thing. But, um, so I find a spot, it says no parking, et cetera, unless you got this sticker or that. I'm like, it's okay, I pay so much money to this university that, you know, and I justify why I'm parking in that spot. Okay, so um, I come out, there's a UTPD, you know, fine on there. I get a ticket. It's like, ah, you know, and I, I just forget about it. And this happens the whole semester. I just, I wake up late every day and I'm thinking, I pay this university so much money, I cannot believe they don't provide any parking for me. And so I just, every day I get the ticket and then, ah, uh, forget about it, forget about it. So by the end of the semester, um, if I actually make it out of bed every day, then, you know, let's say five days a week, 16 weeks, you know, you know like 80 times. So I've got 80 tickets. $50 each, so that's, how much is that? About $4,000? Is that right? 4000 okay. So, end of the semester, I'm like, ah. And then I discover, I go to register for next semester, and then I discover something called bars. <laughs> and they're not gonna let me register unless I pay $4,000 in fine. So not only do I have my $5,000 in tuition, I've got $4,000 in fine, and I'm like, there's no way I cannot pay this. And, um, but I'm thinking, you know, you know, my, and I have a lot of debt actually. I have a lot of people that I borrowed from because of other issues in my life. Nobody's willing to pay anything for me. No one, no one on planet earth is willing to give me any money to pay these. But I'm thinking, oh, but you know, my dad, he's a really good friend of the judge. So I think it's all gonna work out. So I go in, and you know, all smiles, and I'm like, you know, this is gonna get taken care of. And I bring my case to the judge, and you know, let's say the judge said, you know, I know your dad. I'm gonna let you off, it's okay. What would you think about that judge? He's an unrighteous judge, right? How could he do something like that? So, um, so if he's going to be righteous, what does he have to do? What does that judge have to do? What are his options? 
He makes you pay it, but you have no money. And you have no friends that are willing to give you any money. So jail. What's that? You got it. He could pay it for you. So let's say this judge is a judge, not the typical judge that we think of when we think of judge, but he has a heart full of love. You might think, well, if he loves you, then he could just say, you don't have to pay. But that would be unrighteous. So he's got to find a way. He loves you, but he's got to find a way to do things righteously. So that's what propitiation is. It's finding the way to do things righteously to appease the problem. Of course, in this case, our fine, uh, you know, what we owe is not $4,000. It's not even $4 million. The price that we owe is so high, it's so high, that the only way that we can repay this debt is with blood. There has to be a life. Because according to the word, the wages of sin is what? Death. And in fact, to Adam, he told him, remember? He gave him a warning. He said, the day you eat of this tree, the tree of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, you will what? You will surely die. Right? So the price is incredibly high. It's not 4,000. It's not 4 million. It's not 4 billion. It's blood. God, God requires the righteous God requires that there be a payment. But if it's not going to be in the Old Testament, in place of my blood, it could be a lamb's blood, right? Or the blood of a turtle dove, or the blood of a bull. Well, in the New Testament, and of course that could only cover my sins, but in the New Testament, the blood is the blood of Christ. And this blood is so precious that it not only covers, but it takes away the sins, and not of one man, but of all men, and not just all men today, but it's every man who has lived or will live or is living on planet Earth. That's how precious this blood is. There is no limit he offered himself through the eternal spirit. There is no limit to the efficacy, the effectiveness of his blood. 